Hi there, my name is Ulf Schreiber. I'm from the Center for Quantum and Topological Systems at the New York University in Abu Dhabi. I want to talk to you about some recent insights we had here. This joint work with Hisham Sati, also New York University, Abu Dhabi, on the uh, foundations of programming topological quantum computers. Let me try to share my screen so that you see what I'm seeing. Let me recall, you all know this, but just for emphasis, there are good arguments that if quantum computation is ever to be a practical reality, practically useful, robust computing, then it has to be in the form, so the argument goes, of topological quantum computation. This is an old idea. It goes back to an article that to preprint that Kita have published 25 years ago, which was later published jointly with Friedman and others, as shown here, where the term was introduced, the idea was introduced, but it was clearly highlighted that this is all about correcting or preventing errors before they're actually happening. And uh, besides the general strategy of topological stabilization, this article also introduced the idea, the strategy for how to go about it con concretely. Namely, they proposed that topological quantum gates should be implemented by what's called adiabatic braiding of anions. So this is shown in this following schematic picture. You imagine that in the laboratory, you can somehow realize an effectively two-dimensional material, maybe something like a graphene or something similar, um, whose quantum ground state depends on the position of certain point defects, but depends on these positions only topologically, actually homotopy theoretically, meaning that it does not actually depend on uh, little um, deformations of these positions, but it does depend on possible topological, global topological manipulations of the system. So if you were so the idea is to adiabatically move the positions of these defects around in this two-dimensional material so that, so that the world lines trace out a braid, an open knot, then the idea would be that the ground state of the system changes by a unitary operator, which depends only on the homotopy class of this braid, hence only on this, on the knotic, knotted structure. It has not on the precise detail of where this path actually runs. And in this sense, it would be stable against small deformations of the system and hence would be protected against errors. That's the idea. Now, um, if you actually look into how to implement this concretely, it turns out you need something that is called John Simon's theory or West, the West Sumina Witten model. And you need it apparently most prominently for the gauge group SU2. So mathematicians speak of SU2, John Simon's Witten theory, a physicist. Uh, label the onions they were in the sequence, easing Majorana, Fibonacci, and so forth. And um, in any case, it is such braid gates um, that would realize topological quantum computation. And the point I want to highlight is that these braid gates are rather special among all quantum gates. This is evident, but it's something that maybe hasn't found full appreciation yet for what it is. I mean, let's look at what it means mathematically to have such braid gates. If you unwind all the things that go into this, it says that such an onion break it is mathematically the monodromy of what's called the conditioning semiologic of connection on something that is called the bundle of conformal blocks of the chiral SE2 Westermino Witten model conformal field theory. So it's quite a mouthful. Here's a recent review, which gives you some references if you want to look up how this works. But uh, the idea is, is old. Here's a more classical review by Todorov which already um, has all the mathematical ingredients. In any case, um, it follows that efficient programming in topological or off topological quantum computers will somehow have to be aware of this peculiar nature of ionic break gates. And by aware, I mean, in the sense of hardware awareness that has recently become commonplace, something that uh, quantum computing has to realize in order to be practically relevant. So, it does, however, look as if bundles of conformal blocks um, are rather convoluted mathematical structures. And so it may appear that there's, they're hardly suitable, actually, as a foundation for quantum programming. If you just open textbooks that explain these four lines that are listed here, you will find many hundreds of pages of explanations of it. You finally have that uh, braid representation. So it might seem a bit implausible that this serves as the foundation of a quantum programming language. What I, I want to argue here, what we argue is that actually the opposite is the case. If you make use of some recent insights into the foundations of programming languages. Namely, um, 
let's think about this. So programming languages that are suited for describing bundles in the mathematical sense are dependently typed. I mean, in a dependently typed language, as you may know, but let me just highlight this. You um, are allowed to look at situations where you have a given base type X, and for every term in that base type, you get another type parameterized depend on that term X, P of X. Here. So uh, semantically, this means you have something like a classifying map from your given type X to a type universe. So one can make this precise, but I think it's also intuitively already accessible. There's something like a universal, actually univalent bundle of types over this type universe, pulling that back realizes your dependent type as a bundle of types in the intuitively obvious sense of your base type. And this is how bundles are, can be represented in dependent type theories. Now, in addition, oh yeah, I should say um, one, Independent type theory languages that actually exists is ACTA. I will keep giving pointers to ACTA because that is a language that implements all the features that I'm going to invoke for the first part of the talk that establishes plain topological quantum programming. In the end, if there's time, I will have a brief outlook um, for how to do a little bit more. It needs a little bit more structure also in the underlying programming language, which is not yet fully, only partially implemented in ACTA. So, if in addition we want to realize monodromy in bundles, then there's again actually a programming paradigm that reflects this. It's now known as homotopy type theory. This goes back to ideas that are now 12 plus years old. Uh, one of the originators is Steve Audi. This is Audi on type theory and homotopy. So in such homotopy type theoretic um, programming languages, the data types come with the notion of paths between the terms. So if we have any type X, then given a pair of terms, in the type, there's a new type depending on these terms. The type of paths which behaves just like the space of continuous paths in a topological space would between X and Y. So this originally used to be called the group point interpretation of type theory or then the homotopy theoretic model of identity types. Um, or now it's just homotopy type theory. And the archetypal example to keep in mind is the following. So if G is a finitely presented group, as you may code into your computer with a finite amount of code, then there is a, um, a type which I'm going to denote BG, the delooping of G, which is characterized by the fact that it has a unique term. So it's actually uninteresting in classical terms, in classical languages. It's just a single term. You would think nothing can happen. But that type actually has a non-trivial path from that term to itself for every group element. as indicated in this cartoon here, such that the composition of these paths corresponds to the product operation in the group. And uh, for topological quantum computation, we need a special case of this situation where that finitely presented group is the Artin braid group, uh, which is equivalently the fundamental group of the um, contravariant space of points in the plane. So a cartoon says everything here. For instance, um, the braid group on three elements has as group elements such uh, pictures here where these three input points you think of as being distinct points in the plane that are now being moved around while uh, remaining distinct along continuous curves. This traces out this braid, this open knot in 3D space. And the homotopy class of that knot, um, that braid is an element in the braid group. The group operation is composition of such um, braids and so forth. So the point now is that in a dependent type theory, we can prove it's a fact now, uh, one deduces that given an X dependent type family, as I've just shown, it inherits transport operations. Namely, if you pick any path in the base type, it computationally lifts to a program that sends terms of type PX, where X is the input term, to terms of type PY, where Y is the output term. Moreover, you can also coherently lift paths if you have such a path downstairs and a, a term upstairs uh, over the, the source term, then there's a way to coherently produce terms up here in this type family P in a suitable sense, such that it covers these paths downstairs. Um, so anybody who has any background in algebraic topology will recognize that this is um, the same idea as analyze the path lifting in a self vibration. And that's not a coincidence, as we'll see. So such um, homotopy type theoretic programming languages turn out to be remarkably fundamental and have been argued to serve as a new foundation for mathematics. For instance, that's what you can read about in this now famous book on homotopy type theory from a few years back. 
if you are a programmer and you want to enter this subject, I can recommend um, this book, Lecture Notes by Escardo, who explains everything in terms of the programming language ACTA. So I'm not going to speak about foundations of mathematics here, but it is maybe noteworthy that there is a new insight into the foundations of programming that reveals closer connection to the foundations of mathematics that is maybe noteworthy since in quantum programming, we're asking about the foundations of, of physics after all, right? So it's maybe plausible that if there's something to be found about foundations in hot regarding them, it's mathematical aspect, maybe it also has something to say about the foundation of physics aspect. And my claim will be, our claim will be as it does. So we make three observations to start with. First is kind of obvious if you, once you have wrapped your mind around what's going on here. So we observe that reversible circuit execution, such as is the case, such as one is concerned with in quantum computation, is described exactly by this path lifting operation in the pen homotopy type families. That's actually the, the natural reflection of it, as shown in this cartoon here. You, you think of your base type, the paths in your base type as being the names of gates, the instructions, and the lift of a path as being the execution of these instructions. But the non obvious deeper point now is that we claim that the dependent homotopy type family of SU2 conformal blocks, which must incarnate um, these onion break gates, actually does have a slick and immediate construction in homotopy type theory programming languages. I flash the code, so essentially one line code, once you have the break group um, coded, as I just indicated, and it's essentially a one line code. I'm sweeping some slight things under the rug here, but there's not much more to it, which I'll explain in a bit more detail in just a moment, which constructs the bundle of conformal blocks. So which completely tells your computer what you mean by a bundle of conformal blocks. And so then the path lifting operation we claim in that dependent type theory exhibits, represents exactly the anionic break gate execution. So the lift of, um, of braids to actual unitary operators uh, reflecting onion braiding. So this gives, we claim, a natural and powerful topological hardware where quantum programming paradigm. So here's, here's more of an indication of how this works. So the key input is that these bundles of SC2 conformal blocks have actually been realized some decades back to have a completely cohomological definition where cohomology is something that is naturally implemented in homotopy theory. So this goes back to insights by mathematical physicists from the early 1990s, who were really just interested in understanding string theory, 2D conformal field theory, and things like this. Um, but if one goes and checks what these people actually proved, a good review is in these lecture notes here, where if you wanna open it, you should go to chapter seven, where one, um, if one looks what they actually do, it has a very nice algebra topological formulation. So we show how to construct this construction of conformal blocks as a dependent type family in homotopy type theory. So here's again that formula, that code. Let me, I, I don't have time to fully explain this, but let me indicate some key inputs of this formula, which defines onion braid gates in homotopy type theory. So the thing on the right here is supposed to be the notation for an ironberg McLean space. This means to be the classifying tape for complex, ordinary complex cohomology in degree n. Such types are naturally easily actually constructed in homotopy type theory. I'm, I'm showing an article from a few years back who does this. And uh, in ordinary algebraic topology, it's these spaces, these types, which are such that homotopy class of maps into them give cohomology groups. So we can implement this in the type theory. We form, uh, instead of forming a mapping space, we form the function type of maps from this configuration space. Remember, this is just something we can uh, obtain from the braid group to our given classifying type. Now, I have smuggled in a little parameter here everywhere. You see all these types depend on the parameter tau, which is a little twisting that I don't really have time to talk about. It's not too complicated though, but this is the thing I'm sweeping under the rug. There's a twist an extra twist of all these, these structures, which encodes the level and the weight. So the onion types we're actually talking about. And in order to um, kind of get rid of this twist after the fact, we form the dependent product over the space of twist at this symbol here. And finally, we take the whole thing and zero truncate it. This makes this co-cycled space for a twisted 
bundle of cohomology groups into just a fibration of cohomology groups. And that makes this whole construction actually very tractable in the end. So this works because I, I uses that homotopy type three has categorical semantics in parametrized homotopy theory. So in saying that this above type is, does reflect the bundle of conformal blocks, I'm using a dictionary which has been worked out in the last years, I'm showing a nice review, which allows us to go back and forth, essentially bijectively between parametrized homotopy theory and homotopy type theory uh, coded in these hot languages. So that's, um, that's what I'm really claiming here, that if you, if you ask how these Knisnik some logic of connections on bundles of conform blocks are constructed in algebraic topology and then translated via this dictionary to homotopy type theory, you find this construction. So it follows then by the dictionary that path lifting, the transport in this dependent type family is reflects the uh, mono, monodromy break representations for SU2 break group representations and the path lifting is the SU2 anion break gates. So it means that coding this type family into any homotopy type theoretic language like ACTA gives, constitutes a topological quantum programming language, which is fully aware of the fine detail of the topological onion break quantum gates. So that's the first punchline I have to offer. And now time permits, I have a few uh, additional remarks to make. Maybe just first a little uh, summary of what we just said. So in this picture, um, Topological quantum circuit evaluation means to take a path in the Deloop braid group, which is a braid lifted up through this type family of conformal blocks, where it becomes an actual unitary operation, where the point is that this path, um, th this type family of conformal blocks can naturally be constructed in the homotopy type theoretic language. So, but in fact, there's much more we can do um, much more we can actually encode about topological quantum computing hardware with such homotopy type theoretic languages. Namely, and I'll be quick now because I think I'm out of time already. So these bundles are dependent types of SU2 conformal blocks they actually map into something that is much richer and namely something that we call the twisted equivalent differential K cohomology. This is a refinement of ordinary cohomology, which we abbreviate to TED K. And that brings me to the title of my talk. And uh, this is actually what got us started. We actually were trying to understand um, certain brains in string theory and noticed that um, these brains are described by a certain K theory groups whose churn character suddenly includes these conformal blocks. I'm just showing an impressionistic diagram from our article here, which is how we saw that there's something to be done here. And the point though is that it is understood that K theory, this thing called K theory knows, classifies, topological phases of matter. So it, it knows something about those topological quantum materials that are actually meant to host onions. So it gives it a context for where these onions live. So this general relation between K theory and topological phases also goes back to Kitaev in another famous article from 2009. And uh, it's not quite sufficient though to just look at the topological phases. We need them to be what's called topologically ordered in order to have onions. That's a term that goes back to, to when already decades ago, but it was, um, reappreciated for what it actually says only more recently. And uh, in a second article earlier this year, we show that the twisted equivalent um, differential K theory of um, certain crystalline materials knows the fine detail of the topological structure of these materials. I'm just again showing some impressionistic diagram here, which I don't have time to really explain. The point is just there's some math here encoded by TIP K theory, which accurate, accurately reflects fine detail of topological quantum materials. Now the point is that TED K theory and hence topologically ordered phases are not quite encodable in plain homotopy type theory language, but one only has to add a little bit to these languages and make them what we call cohesive. So cohesive homotopy type theory is something that I introduced uh, in my habilitation thesis. And then um, we developed it a bit. Michael Schulman developed it quite a bit by himself. Um, starting with this article that I'm showing here. If you want to dig into this, I can recommend these uh, video recordings of lectures that my former PhD student Felix made, where he introduces these concepts and works with them. 
Um, and the, the point is that, uh, so in cohesive full multiple type theory, uh, one can implement it K theory and hence these on your phases. And a part of the um, structure of cohesive form multiple type theory has already been implemented in ACTA. So cohesive form multiple type theory consists essentially of adding two plane hot, adding two modal operators with certain conditions. And one of them has been added, the, what I called originally the flat modality, it has been added to ACTA. And um, you can open, for instance, the, the PhD thesis of my, of Felix, by Felix, to see how he um, goes and proves theorems in differential geometry using this flat modality in, in ACTA. So um, this needs to be further developed now, but there's a clear path, we think, for implementing um, not just this hardware where topological quantum computation, but even a richer programming paradigm that even reflects um, fine detail of the, of the physics inside which this unembraiding is expected to actually take place. So this is something we're actually, we're currently developing at a new research center we have in Abu Dhabi at New York University of Abu Dhabi called the Center for Quantum and topological systems. And uh, yeah, if you go to that webpage, you can see updates of, of what we're doing. That's what I, what I have to say. Thank you very much for your attention. And I guess I will now try to join you to answer some questions, if there are any. You try to log out of this. Thanks for your attention. Bye-bye.